Hey, this is Andrew from SciChart. In this video, we're going to be going through a performance comparison between SciChart.js and Arcshon Lightning Chart JS. In order to do this comparison, what we're going to be using is code that's been published by Arcshon themselves. So we're using their benchmark, which is available at Arcshon slash JavaScript charts performance comparison on GitHub. If you go into this uh, in the readme and you have a look, you'll see there's a number of chart components that have been compared, including high charts, lightning charts, um, any chart, am charts, and so on. There's a number of speed tests that they perform, um, mostly revolving around line charts, so they haven't tested other chart types. Um, but in particular, they're focused on really big data charts. So do a search in this page for million or 100 million, and you'll see this claim. Maximum dataset size 500 million points and maximum line chart with 100 million data points can be loaded in 6.5 seconds. Now, just putting aside the fact that 500 million data points is probably beyond the memory limit of the browser, we're going to focus on the 100 million data point claim in this video. So I've downloaded the code here and I've opened it up in WebStorm. I've made no adjustments to this code, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the static test, but change the number of points here. So typically the static test loads a ECG style waveform like this. And you can see on the right that it shows the number of milliseconds that it takes to load this type of chart. So this is the Arcshon test and it's loading the chart in 170 milliseconds. What I'm next going to do is change the number of points here. So there are 10 channels. I want 100 million points in total. So I'm going to change it to 10 million points per channel times 10 equals 100 million points. In order to have a fair test, I'm going to kill the Chrome browser because I don't want any memory from the last test to be hanging over into this test case. So let me just open up a new Chrome browser. And I'll need to open the inspector because this is how the performance numbers are reported. And finally, to go to localhost 8080. Now the lightning chart JS test is beginning to run and you can see on the right that it's reporting the number of points that have been loaded and the time that it's taken to load them. However, immediately you'll begin to notice that the numbers on the right for time don't actually match the amount of time that it takes to draw. So this example is still loading. It's on 80 million right now and it's tr probably trying to find memory to fit in the last 20 million. So there we are in 90 million. And at this point, the browser stops and it says down on the right that it has paused before a potential out of memory crash. So something's gone wrong and the browser's run out of memory. This is what I was talking about earlier. The memory usage of the browser is probably capped around one and a half gigabytes per tab, um, certainly less than four gigabytes. And that depends on your system and on the parameters of Chrome that you've opened. So let's kill the browser and we're going to try the same thing again with SciChart. So I'm not changing anything else in this example. This is the vanilla code taken from their repository. The number of points is exactly the same. The number of channels is exactly the same. I'm simply swapping LCJS for SciChart and I'm running the static test again. So let's open up a new Chrome browser instance to be fair and have a completely fresh slate and open up the console. Now we're going to go to localhost 8080. SciChart begins to load the data in and on the right it reports the amount of data and the time, but you'll notice that this is now performing a lot more quickly. It's loading in faster. In fact, SciChart has loaded 100 million data points, first of all, without having an out of memory exception. And secondly, we've done it in 12 seconds. This is about two and a half times faster than the Arcshon Lightning Chart JS uh, demonstration. At this point, I want to make a little note about the hardware that I've run on. Obviously, the hardware that you choose to run these performance tests on will affect the result. Uh, this machine is a Razer laptop. It's fairly high powered. It's got an Intel i7 12800H processor, 2.4 gigahertz clock speed, and it has 14 cores, of which some are high performance cores and some are sort of lower power cores for, you know, the laptop battery life. 
It has 32 gigabytes of RAM and an NVIDIA 3080 GPU. You can find out what GPU your browser is using by going into Chrome and typing Chrome slash slash GPU and searching on the page for GL Renderer or GL Vendor and it will tell you exactly what GPU Chrome is using. So you might have a multi GPU system. Um, I do and in this case it's using the 3080 Ti. So that's quite a powerful laptop graphics card. But Cytro.js and Lightning Chart, they both are GPU accelerated charts. So you would expect both of them to take advantage of the graphics card. If you have faster graphics and you have faster processor, you would expect both of them to perform very well. However, in this case, Cytro.js has outperformed Lightning Chart in their own performance test. By rendering 100 million data points, Cytro.js loaded the data set and displayed it in 11 seconds without any out of memory crash. Lightning Chart JS took 32 seconds and ran out of memory at the end of the test, making SciChart JS 2.9 times faster than Lightning Chart in this test case. SciChart JS is a JavaScript chart component powered by WebAssembly and WebGL. It's used by scientific, financial, and medical companies around the world. It has an extremely high rating of 4.84 out of 5 by its customers and incredible feedback about performance, features, flexibility, and more. Check it out on our website at www.sidechart.com.